Uh, welcome everyone. Super excited to have our uh, good conversation here this morning. We're starting the day off on a good foot. Um, for those of you who haven't had a chance to meet Anthony Anderson, co-founder of the Elite Companies, and we are like a month away, no, less than a month from our Elite Growth Academy out in San Diego. I can't believe it's coming up so quick, Jenna. It's crazy. We've got some good events going. We're, we're, the planning is full steam ahead, and I, I can't wait. Yeah, the, the, the team has been uh, putting in a tremendous amount of time and energy. So if you haven't got your tickets yet, EliteGrowthAcademy.com. Come on out to San Diego with us. Get a chance to not only meet Jen and myself, but some amazing speakers and experts in our virtual family office, like who we're with this morning. So um, we've known Bruce now for a couple years, and it's just phenomenal. It's like one of the one of the best planning specialists and minds when it comes to really advanced planning in the qualified plan space. And he does some incredible things in terms of how he he layers the plans on top of one another and just creates opportunity that you know really I've haven't seen in the industry before. So. Uh, I'm excited for our conversation today. He's been a great, great, great uh, addition to the community. Jenna, do you mind kind of giving a more formal background of Bruce, and then we'll just jump into a little discussion on what, what he plans to talk about with the community? Absolutely. So if you have been following along with our Elite Growth Academy Facebook Live series, or even if you haven't, it's safe to say that we've been talking with some pretty impressive specialists from throughout the country. And today is no exception. A financial services industry veteran, Bruce has over 30 years of experience helping both individuals and advisors tackle complex financial and retirement planning challenges. He is a sought out speaker on the topic of qualified retirement plans. And as Anton said, has done some tremendous work within our community. Now, Bruce, I know that our attendees can learn so much from you. And for those who don't know you, I would love for them to get to know you a bit better today. So if you could just dive into a little bit deeper what they can expect to hear from you this November, that would be great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your kind words, guys. Um, I'm looking forward to being in San Diego. I have been there many, many times and uh, love being there. So um, in, in November, what I'd like to do is help the uh, attendees get a sense of the flexibility and scale and applications that qualified plans can help them help their clients meet their not only retirement goals, but their tax planning goals. These are wonderful tax control tools. And this other benefit of them, of course, is it allows them to accumulate tremendous amounts of wealth in an asset protected way to provide for their retirement over long periods of time. It, it's, it's not only income planning, but it's also legacy planning for them and their families. So I think that's what we're gonna highlight along with the fact that I don't know if anybody's aware of this, I don't wanna be letting any cats out of the bag, but there are a few tax changes that are being <laughs> mentioned as we go along. And we're doing a lot of work right now in anticipation. We don't know which ones will change. You know, as Yogi Berra said, it's hard to make predictions, especially when they're about the future. And so uh, I don't know what changes are going to come. But for example, in the grantor trust area, we're doing extensive research about using loans instead of gifts and in using partnerships instead of trusts and things that will not only get around the problems of the change, but also may enhance the ability of the planning community to do really good things for clients. So I think that's what you can expect from my session in, in <clears throat> San Diego. And I, like I say, I'm really looking forward to it. Love it, as are we obviously. So one of the things I've heard you talk about Bruce is and I, I might not get the quote exactly right, but it's along the lines of this isn't your father or grandfather's qualified plan. Yeah. I, I, I think there's a lot of preconceived notions or outdated uh, understanding of, of what we can actually do when we start getting a little bit sophisticated. Do you mind kind of elaborating on, on that? That's, that's, a, that's a great point. And, and you know, I, I think that's one of the really big pluses of using qualified plans today. Historically, everybody thought of these as a fixed commitment where you didn't, once you made a decision to do this, 
you had no flexibility. It was a long-term fixed commitment. You couldn't change things. Well, the Pension Protection Act changed all of that. And what it did was they said, you know, we don't want plans to get underfunded. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a funding method, which they did, that'll allow you to put in very large amounts of money when times are good, such that you can put in a lot less and maybe nothing when times are not as good. And this flexibility has really changed the landscape of using these plans and how they fit for closely held and professional businesses, uh, which historically have had volatility in their earnings. And so uh, while they liked the idea of being able to put lots of money away, the downside was always, oh my goodness, what happens if I have a bad year? And this funding method has taken that out of the equation by giving this tremendous flexibility. The range of contribution, just as an aside, is tenfold. So if the top end of the range is $500,000, the bottom end will be about 50,000. So it, it's really magnificent. So, and this is a little bit of a, I know the answer to the question, but I, somebody, somebody watching this is wondering, so when we talk about plans like this, what are we talking about? Are we talking about 401ks, 401hs, cash balance plans? What, what are you talking about here, Bruce? All of the above. Uh, you know, about 70% of the plans we do are combinations of plans. Where and That's what I was hoping you're going to highlight, because that's, that's an interesting thing, I think, once we start actually combining the plans together. Yeah. Yeah, and why, why, why do you do that? Yeah, it's, well, you know, what happens is, and it depends a lot on the demographics, what the design will look like. But let's assume for a second that we have an owner who's quite a bit older than his employees. So I might combine a 401k profit sharing plan and a cash balance plan or defined benefit plan. And the idea being that the employees will get the majority of their benefits out of the 401k profit sharing plan because they have so many years to project contributions and compound interest. Whereas my owner, who is much older perhaps, he doesn't have as many years until he reaches that normal retirement age. So we're gonna compress time and have to fund a lifetime of contributions, perhaps in 10 years. So what happens is I get to compress time for the owner and expand time for the employees. And what it does is it tends to give us the ability to weight the contributions to the owners because we cross test these plans, meaning we project benefits that are earned in either or both plans all the way out to normal retirement age. And we do our tests based on benefits not on contributions. So I can be making very large contributions for my owner and relatively small contributions for the employees. And normally we'd expect the owner to get, you know, 80 plus percent of all contribution costs for the plans. Love it. And then another, another thing I've heard dozens of times is you can't buy insurance inside of a qualified plan. Yeah. Right, right, Chris? <laughs> uh, actually, about 85% of the plans we do have an insurance component. And, and it comes in a couple of different flavors. Some clients have a lot of other money, and they're mostly interested in a strategy where they can pay for life insurance on a tax-deductible basis as part of the deductible contribution to the plan and use it as a legacy planning, if you will, a wealth transfer. And so then we highlight the death benefit. But there are some other clients who are saying, gee, I can't get all the retirement income I need. So we might look at de-emphasizing the death benefit and in mm. emphasizing the cash accumulation such that down the road, what we're going to do is access the cash values on a tax-free basis to supplement what they're getting from the retirement plan. And this has tremendous, we do an economic benefit analysis of this strategy because you never know if something's good or not until you compare it to what your other choices are. 
So in all cases, our feasibility study will always compare a plan that does not have an insurance component to one that does. And then obviously the client can make a decision as to which best fits their unique situation. Yeah, which I love because the conversations we've had in the past are, you know, CPAs, even business owners, you know, people naturally are skeptical. So they don't want to be feeling like this is just a trick to sell more insurance. Oh. So by combining the plans and giving it both an aspect of the managing assets and the insurance, and then letting the business owner choose. Yeah. Yeah. They like the option. Yeah. yeah. It, and, and that that's really what plans are about. Uh, I've t- said this for many, many years. Plans are not sold. They're explained and adopted. You know, uh, I, I, I believe that clients, once they see the benefit in their unique situation, and, and they're not for everyone, you know, um, but where they fit and where insurance fits, it, you know, I think the technical term is it's a home run. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's so much better than anything else they could do in terms of tax leverage. Sure, sure. Yeah. So not just using one type of qualified plan, but combination plans, Mm -hmm. the option to purchase insurance inside of a plan, in addition to having assets that can be managed inside the plan. Um, Let's say I'm an advisor listening to this right now, whether I knew that or not, what should I assume the CPA know? I mean, CPAs must already know all of those things and and be able to put up these kind of qualified plans or is that... You know, I'm going to defend the CPAs for a second because they have a a very difficult lot in life. You know, if you look at most CPA, you know, smaller CPA practices, I'm not talking about the big four or, or, you know, the national firms and so on, but I'm talking about the firms that I tend to be exposed to and deal with. Let's say they have 500 clients. Maybe two or three of them are very, very successful business owners. I mean, tremendously successful who need a lot of sophisticated planning. Well, if if that small percentage of your practice is is that really high income group, it's hard to justify becoming a specialist in all of the different areas. So I think what you've put together is such a benefit to them because the virtual family office gives them the ability to deal with that small select group of clients they have while focusing their attention on their bread and butter. And you don't have to be an expert in everything. And that's one of the joys of the elite group is that you've done such a great job of putting this all together. So, uh, you know, I, I don't say that gratuitously. I, I truly believe that that's where this all is going to go in the future, because I don't know if you've noticed, the world is getting more complicated. <laughs> and some people have noticed, that's some people have noticed that. <laughs> and so we're all learning stuff that 10 years ago, we didn't think even existed. And sure. so- like I, like I say, I, in defense, is we can't all deal with all the clients, okay? Com- com- completely agree. And really well said, obviously, you know, Jen and I appreciate the kind words about the model. And, and I think to drive that point home, um, I just want to make sure the audience doesn't make an assumption that somebody else knows this and somebody else is going to have this conversation with your clients or your enrolled agent, CPA, attorneys, et cetera. Like these conversations are more rare than um, I certainly assumed before I started kind of diving into this universe 10 plus years ago, so. Anton, I I wanna tell you that that comes up all the time with clients. Why didn't my attorney, why didn't my CPA tell me? Well, the the answer is that they didn't have a motive to do that. They, they mm. just didn't know. I mean, why would they go and investigate something that they didn't have an application for before they met that client? Yeah. You know, so yep. I, think it's, I think it's a great model because it solves that problem for them. Who, not how. 
Do not how. Love it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's just the, the world is getting more complicated, as you said. I think it already was too complicated for me to become an expert in all of these areas, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> quickly anybody. So I love it. Um, any, any, any other things, Jenna, we should touch on about November coming up with Bruce or any other thoughts, Bruce, you have for the, for the members that you'll see there? No, I, I think we will have a, a fun time getting together. And I think one of the things that we can talk about are the applications for qualified plans that are that go beyond just saving for retirement. As a matter of fact, I had a wonderful uh, call with one of your advisors, uh, mastermind advisor yesterday and their client who's thinking about selling their business. Mm -hmm. And the what seemed to be a reason not to do it turned out to be the exact reason they were going to do it. Interesting. As the plan solved a lot of their tax planning problems surrounding a potential sale. Love so it. we'll talk about things like that as well. Okay, very good. All right. Well, I, I'm, I'm excited to uh, see you in person. Jen and I are fired up. I can't believe it's less than a month away. Jenna, last thoughts? Yeah, about five weeks left. If you haven't jumped on, it's www.elitegrowthacademy.com. You can attend in person, sunny San Diego. We'll all be there. Or if you want to attend virtually, that's an option too. If you want to have the comfort of your home or office, go ahead and sign up for the virtual option. Either way, come ready to learn and hear from all of these amazing specialists. And if you want to invest in yourself, invest in your business, this is the event for you. So yeah, thanks so much, Bruce. Really appreciate it. Always one of our favorite speakers who comes out. And uh, yeah, Anton, another great conversation. Love it. Great way to start the day. Thanks, everybody. See Have everybody a wonderful day. November. See thanks, you soon. Everyone. Thanks, Thank you, Bruce. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.